so I can get the full scope of everything. I would like to get the full scope of his, pretty much his reasoning at what is happening. Because this was news to me, which was out of nowhere. And I'm like, damn. But now, hearing this, I'm like, okay. There's more to this than I thought. Interview the this interview done week before, week after the two point half anniversary for Global and Korean. So early May release today. Okay. Development began April 2018. Development had difficulties, but thanks to the efforts of colleagues, partners, since you played the game, where today, because yeah, the beginning of the game was. The people, was, I watched that video. Yeah, the beginning of the game. Holy shit! Rough start. It was rough. Let's just say rough. Says they all read the fanfic made for the contest and that he loves seeing the love of the sensei for the students. He thinks that they do not fully meet the expectations of the teachers in terms of game quality. But there is still a lot of fundamentally to improve. That's in that is that's interesting. Yes, the game can have improvement. Don't get me wrong, but overall, the gameplay the game is. The game's fine. I think the game was fine. Uh, my guess is that as a dev, as a dev team, as a developer, especially, I would say you always want to strive for higher points, you know, going a little more above and beyond, you know, all that kind of shit. Saying that they not fully have met the expectations in terms of the game quality is a, uh, I say that's a little bit of a low ball. It's probably different in his eyes, but I mean, the fans enjoy it. And overall, they've been improving the game for a while now and adding banger features as it is. So, yeah. I don't, I don't I don't say I really don't say that if he if he thinks he didn't make the full expectations then I can I'll then I can understand it but in my eyes I think as a player just normally playing the game I think they did a good job I think they met out I think they did they met some of expectations that keep fans that kept fans in that's just my thought we'll soon show the Korean voice edition later announced later this year all right Volume 1, Chapter 3 was developed to match the anime's release timing. Oh! This makes more sense now. This is why planning is fucking important. Oh, they planned this? Okay. Oh, this was planned from the... So they planned this shit from the start. Okay. Okay, that makes sense. That that makes more sense. All right, all right, that makes more sense. The release of anime episode one is a memorable moment for him. True, true. It's always good to see your writings and all your kind of shit to be pretty much turned into a, a actual like an like animation form because it is just text and images, and then we get the still shot, um, still shot illustrations, you know, so. But it's good to see the first episode of his creation be able, of his writing and story, be able to be played out. About a season two, he knows that the Sensei's will like a season two, and he also knows that teachers want a more interesting follow-up season. However, he thinks uh, that a lot of preparation needed to meet the high expectations of Sensei's. He probably knows that the reception of anime month guys has declined a lot over the episodes. Possibly. Yeah. I, I can say that for sure. Maybe. It's very, it's very half and half. I will say this, the Blue Archive anime is definitely a big, it was a big half and half for people. Some people didn't mesh well with the anime saying that it didn't really include everything. And others thought the anime did its job with what it's supposed to do. Pretty much give a little basic rundown of 
the volume, the first volume of chapter one. And I really don't know what what some of these people expected for see chapter one to be like did they really expect we're gonna be getting to like did they think there was gonna be like a 12 parter not 12 like 24 episode 30 episode season where we're gonna be going through almost like a good amount of chapters like and some people said the action wasn't too crazy in my opinion the action didn't need to be like demon slayer or fucking fate or jitsu kaisen level of of action i think the action that they had for starting out for the anime for their first ever anime starting out was fine it was fine they did what they could do and boom and they made the season <coughs> But well, definitely when episode 11 roll around. Yes, it was 11 roll around. That was the highest. That was the highest reception of, of an episode. Positive reception the episode got. Because it stayed true. There was parts in there that stayed true. To the um, to the game. And that's what people are looking for. People are looking for the game to stay true. And honest with itself. But I'm glad to hear that they are still thinking about the anime and they want to keep the anime going. And they said lots of preparations are needed. So if we're hearing about this, then quite possibly. um, I can see a two year develop. I either see a one year development. So if they're developing it right now, that means we won't be seeing this until either late late next year or the beginning of or the beginning of the year after that so it's pretty much 2025 no 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 the beginning of 2026 i should say if they're thinking of massive preparations in their minds i would say to let's say give it uh give it two years two years i'd say give it two years um, the future of Blue Archive and Team Reconstruct. Reconstruing. As a prideful grit of gratitude from my colleagues, said that he knows that tastes of Sensei players are different from the mainstream audience, and therefore the first thing about Sensei, rather than make an ambitious choice to please all gamers and attract wider audience, whether in game or outside of the game, says the best decision they made was to go with an academy setting and make a colorful game in an era where gotchas lean towards a dark atmosphere, and that. And that thanks to they managed to create a game that is loved even with a bright and light sphere. To be getting enough on the colleagues, they have become a very big organization. Taco Korea, Archive thanks to game play together. They have a long roadmap. Archive is growing and has expanded with better future. Probably talking about things like that. Last class of them, mini games to control Hina, and he said there will be the next step: expanded development, reshuffle blue archives. That is true. Mm, that is true that is true and then this is um all of them that are pretty much being changed around here everybody's getting changed and shit like that people, some people are stepping back from their roles and all that stuff so overall what do i think about this what do i think about this uh going mainstream uh, fuck that. I'm glad that they said no to mainstream. I'm glad that they said no to mainstream because that really does. Um, <clears throat> there, there's a, there's two sides to this. It's a double-edged sword. It's another case of the, of going, being mainstream and having your own niche. It's a big double-edged sword. Going mainstream means you have a way more op there are way more opportunities, more offers, investors, a wider audience, and more eyes on you. I get that. Going niche, being niche, a more dedicated fan base that actually enjoys what you want, constructive criticism that will help out the game, help the game going forward, and pretty much everybody in the dev team is pretty much on the same page. And they decided to go with something more colorful, instead of dark tone, like how you know. 
most of the gotchas aren't. Most of the gotchas are. They have always a dark, grim story to it that is sad. Hmm. I'm glad they made that choice. Really glad they made that choice not to go mainstream. It's better to just please your fans instead of just pleasing everybody because you know how it went. I think everybody knows what happens when you try to please everybody. And you're this when you're a big gotcha game, you try to please everybody, you please nobody. And guess what? Yeah, it's an impact. Literally Genshin Genshin Impact. It's It's crazy, bro. It's it's fucking crazy. Man, my timer went off. But um should I make I don't know if I'll make this a video. Oh, what's your, what are y'all thoughts for the people who are actually in the chat? Well, like, what, what are y'all thoughts? Because I say, in my, I, I would say, give it time. In my opinion. I'd say give it, I'd say it's all about... It really is all about giving this up, giving time. We're gonna give it, give it time. We'll see what happens. I think the game will just, the game is gonna keep improving. I'm gonna be the optimistic son of a bitch, all right? I'm gonna be the, uh, I'm gonna be the optimistic tard. <laughs> well, all right, take it off the oven. But like I said, a game like this is, a game like this is one of a kind. And the sea of gotcha games that we have where Set, let's just be real, sexy females, sexy females and all that shit, your Kafkas, your Black Swans, the Nikkei's, the Nikkei's like Rappi, the Red Hood, Rapunzel, Weathering Ways with Chang Li, Yin Lin and all of them, and the see where gotcha games where primarily people are looking for characters that look like that, it's good to see, it is definitely good to say, and I don't even think, this is not even a stretch, in my eyes, this ain't even a stretch. Like, this is... Blue Archive is definitely unique out of the crowd. For a game that has a lot of lollies. And the stretches and lengths that they had to go through for this game. For... For fucking trying to... For taking on the fucking Korean government, first off. And then winning. Hey, Harry. Is already, like, crazy enough already crazy enough like the lengths that the developers and the game and the community has went through this game is really a one-of-a-kind gotcha game if you're being real like i'm being real it's not even a fucking stretch like what other lollycon yeah yeah lollycon based game can you say works like how blue archive does and I'm not going to say it has a lot of infamy because it's not infamous. The game is infamous. It's just misunderstood because the word, not the word, because, well, the word lolly, you know, and all that shit. People love to fucking fuck around with the word lolly, even though they don't even know what, the, what that shit means at all. But the game does get misunderstood a few times. And for people who really want to get into it and try it, they'll go into the game, play it, bam, be interested in it. And then go ahead boom but the crit but, but they've been going through a lot they have done a lot and it shows i mean they're out selling crazy i mean they i mean what, what was it like comic they were at like comic or some shit and it was the best selling shit at the comic at like the comic um place i forgot what it was called it was the number one selling shit like this game is special it is one of its kind it is wholeheartedly one of its kind and that's just not even a stretch this is just indeed a fact
even if it's not going to be at the tippity top of the charts it don't need to be at the tippity top of the charts as long as it's making revenue and a good amount it's good i mean if we really just took a take a good look at it all rest of the all the rest of these games what they got adult look what, what were adult looking characters all that kind of shit they had their yin lins their busty females they got all that shit all right but blue archive is mainly the only one that has been doing the most and staying which is the crazy part and it goes to show you that blue archive has filled in a market that nobody else really wants to touch because they're going for the wider reach but still also having their niches like weathering waves for example weathering waves fills in that slot of having good characters hot characters cute characters all that kind of shit but the main niche about it that separates it from Genshin impact and the other um i'm gonna say triple a's that's not it gotcha games is that it was actually is crow games is combat their combat when it comes to weathering waves and their combat in pgr literally separates them from the competition because they're known in the gotcha space for having hard content blue archives hold blue archives niche literally is the fact that they are the lolly game they are the lolly gotcha game they push out a shit ton of normies that's for damn sure a lot of normies are just like whoa whoa no i'm not trying to deal with that uh-uh no not for me and that's a niche that's filled that is legit a niche that is finally fucking filled is the lollicons and that is nice to see so they pretty much they came in a market like they came they pretty much came into a market knowing damn well what they're making is gonna give them a lot give them a lot of backlash and stupid ass drama just for the shit that they're making and they just did not care because they really had a thought like let's just be honest they legit had a thought there was indeed a comp what's gonna burn they had indeed a conversation of being mainstream. And they did say, right here, said that he knows that the taste of senseis are different from the mainstream audience. Yeah. Even he knows. Even he fucking knows about the mainstream audience. The quote unquote mainstream audience. Or the modern audience. He even knows about this. That's how you know a developer is fucking smart. They even know about this shit. They even know about the oh. We could have went for the mainstream modern audience. Because that could have also given us a wider audience. And all that shit. And a lot of shit in game and outside the game. But like they said. The best decision was to go for an academy setting, make a colorful game in an era where gacha games lean towards dark ass, dark atmosphere, and they just want to make you characters. That's really it. It worked. And it worked. Like, it legit fucking worked. <laughs> it fucking worked. Not to say every, every, what everybody else is doing is bad. It's just the fact that they decided to do something completely different. And it's working simple as that they decided to go outside the box go into a market that is typically shunned on like hardcore on the internet like lollies is so fucking shunned on dude and they think it's bad and people think it's bad or you are gonna be going to some crazy shit if you if you like it Well, the one in Blue, Ar Blue Archive. Two thousand twenty-first. Yeah, they were in. Okay, they were definitely in the realm of. So they were in the realm of pretty much when Genshin was out. All that shit. Okay. Yeah, they were in the realm of Genshin. HSR was two thousand twenty-three. Yeah, HSR was 2023. Genshin was already out. I think it was 2022. 
think this was a very weird part. What gacha games came out in 2021? Or I was still there. I gotta look that up real quick. Oh, gacha games in 2021. Yeah, I don't think there was a lot. I don't believe there was a lot. Punishing Grey Raven was there. Blue Archive, Alchemy Scar, Alchemy Stars, all that shit. Heart Knights, honestly. So there was a lot of shit, but the main, but the literal main big dog, um, big dog of the group was Genshin Impact. Because it was just super fucking huge. I believe Nikkei was a lot later. Let me check. I think Nikkei was 2000, um, 2022. Yeah, Nikkei was 2022. Mm, 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 mm. So yeah, they came into a mark. Oh my god. They, they jumped into a market. That wasn't being shown at all. Like not being done in the slightest nobody was doing it nobody wanted to touch that market which was the lollicon market and i'm being real it is a big cash grab shit not even a cash grab it's just a big market in general just to grab for people like that bro they found a mark like they played it smart they found a market they went in, they went in, they decided to bam, bang, boom, make profit, make a good, make a really good game with a nice story, and boom, all good. So, all in all, I'm glad that they decided to stick with what the senseis wanted and not go mainstream, because the mainstream audience is, well nobody to be honest i'm glad they're still thinking about season two i'm really i'm happy that they're still thinking about a season two and i already know season two is gonna be <sighs> volume two chapter one jesus i really hope they do well with that <sighs> it's like I, if they're gonna really knock it up if they're gonna try to knock it out the park with a season two i hope they do when it comes to this next volume because oh my god <laughs> oh lord it, let's just say oh man let's just say it's gonna be a very very interesting time for that season two that season two is gonna be interesting to say the least i already know i already know people god damn bro Where I was gonna see my man was made fun of. Uh, what was that? I'm a, I was I made fun of my friend who was looking at the development of BA. Great for introducing me to the game, honestly. It was December of last year. Yeah, as a lot of people knew about it. See, I knew about the game too. There's the thing: we all knew about it, but we just didn't play it on. And I feel like if I played it earlier and talked about it more. Hmm. Then sick could have been changed. Who knows? Who knows? <laughs>